Hello everyone. So in this lab exercise, we are going to see how to use Azure service endpoints for certain scenarios. We are going to use Azure service endpoints to block communication to the outside internet world and we are going to only restrict access to Azure storage account using this Azure service endpoints. And let's go and find out how we can do that. So in this exercise, we are going to create virtual network service endpoints. That is going to enable us to limit network access to some Azure resources to a virtual network subnet. So the first task what we're going to do today is to create virtual network and then we are going to enable service endpoint. So let's go and do these two tasks now. To create a virtual network, click on create a resource, search for virtual network and select the virtual network from Microsoft and click on create. Here select the subscription and select a resource group. Since we don't have a resource group, I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call it my resource group and click OK. Give a name for your virtual network. I'm going to call it core services vnet and I'm going to place it in East US itself. Next, click on IP address. By default, there will be an address space allocated. So I'm going to retain that for this exercise. Under subnet, we have a default subnet created. So I'm going to modify that. I'm going to change the name from default to public and the subnet IP address range is 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and click on save. Next click on the security tab. We are not going to enable any of these at the moment. So click on review and create and click on create. The deployment is in progress. It wouldn't take more than a minute or so. All right. So our deployment is complete. Click on go to resource to verify all the changes you have made. Address spaces is fine. We have the right subnet we created as well. So click on go to home. The next task we are going to do is we are going to enable a service endpoint. To enable a service endpoint, we have to go back to our virtual network. So click on core services vnets we created. On the left hand side under settings, click on subnets. On the top of the subnet, click on create a subnet. Here I'm going to give a value called private as the name for the new subnet. Subnet range is 10.0.1.0 slash 24. That is what I'm giving. Scroll down until you find service endpoints. So under service endpoints, you can see that this is where you can create service endpoint policies to allow traffic to specific Azure resources from your virtual network over service endpoints. Under services, make sure you select and search for Microsoft storage and select that. We are not making any other changes to subnet delegation or service endpoint policies. Click on save. Now you should have two subnets, one a public one, another one is a private one. Now the next task is to restrict a network access for a subnet. So let's go and do that. Let me go back to the home page. So for by default, all virtual machines in a subnet can communicate with all resources. So you can limit communication to and from all resources in a subnet by creating a network security group and associating it to the subnet. So let's go and create a security group. So click on create a resource. This time search for security group and click enter and select network security group. Click on create. Select the resource group as the one which we created my resource group and give a name for your network security group. I'm going to call it Contuso Private Network Security Group and retain the region as East US. Click on Review and Create and click on Create. Let's wait for the deployment to complete. After the deployment, click on Go to Resource. On the Network Security Group page, go to Settings and click on Outbound Security Rules. Here, click on Add. So here under Source, we are going to select Any, Source Port Ranges, Asterisks, destination as service tag under destination service tag select storage so search for storage and select that under services select custom scroll down under destination port ranges provide asterisks for all port ranges protocol is any and action is allow priority i'm going to retain 100 and the name of the rule i'm going to give allow storage all and click on add so that's how you create a new rule within your network security group. Now that our rule is created, let's quickly refresh and check the rule. So this is the new rule we created. So I'm going to click on add and create one more outbound rule. This outbound rule 
what we are going to create is to deny communication to the internet. So this rule should override any default rule in all network security group that allows outbound internet connection. So under source, select any source port range asterisk, destination again service tag. Under destination service tag, make sure you select internet, service is custom and the port again we are giving asterisk, scroll down. Under protocol, make sure you select any. Under action, make sure you select deny because we want to deny any sort of internet communication. Priority retain 110. Under name, I'm going to change it to deny internet to all so that I understand what is this rule about and click on add. So we have created another outbound rule as well. So one to allow communication to storage, another one to deny any sort of internet communication. Now let's go and do the task 5 which is to allow access for RDP connections. So what we have done just now is to create the outbound rules. Next what we are going to do is we are going to create some inbound rules. So go back to your network security group. Under settings this time select inbound security rules and click on add. So this inbound security rule we are going to create is to allow remote desktop protocol traffic to the subnet from anywhere so that the rule overrides a default security rule that denies all inbound traffic from the internet. So source is any source port range asterisk for all. Under destination, select any. Service is custom and destination port for RDP is 3389. Scroll down, there is no changes in the protocol. Under action, allow priority 120 and I'm gonna change the name to allow RDP all and click on add. So when you create this rule, there will be a warning. So RDP port 3389 is exposed to internet. That's why there is a warning. So this is only recommended for testing. For production environment, Microsoft recommend that using a VPN or private connection. All right, so now we have created all the rules required. Let's go and associate it. Now that we have created all the rules we are required on the left hand side, Click on subnets and we don't have any associations at the moment. So click on associate from the drop down, choose the virtual network. So I'm going to choose core services VNet. Under the VNet, we have to associate it with the private subnet we created. Once you make the necessary changes, click on OK. So this is how you create a NSG or a security group and associate that rules to a particular subnet. So it sticks on the policies or the rules we created. So now that we have completed that task, so in the next task, we are going to restrict network access to a resource. So we are going to create a storage account and we are going to restrict access to that storage account. In the Azure portal, go and click on create a new resource to create a storage account. I'm going to simply click on storage accounts. We don't have one at the moment, so I can create a brand new storage account. So click on create. Make sure you select the right subscription. Change the resource group to one which we are using for this exercise. That is my resource group. Give a name for your storage account. I'm going to call it Contoso storage and some random number because this name has to be unique. I'm going to retain it in East US. Performance is standard is fine. Under redundancy, I'm going to choose LRS, which is locally redundant storage. And we are not going to make any changes in any of the other tabs. So simply click on review and create. After validation, click on create. So our storage account is created. So click on go to resource to verify your storage account. So let's look at what is the next task. Now that we have created the storage account, the next task is to create a file share in the storage account. So let's go and do that. So within the storage account on the left hand side under data storage, click on file shares and to create a new file share, click on file share. Give a name for your file share. I'm going to call it for marketing. Under tier, I'm going to keep it transaction optimized and click on create. All right. So now we have our file share created. So if you want to verify that, so click on the file share. This is where you will be able to upload, download files and connect to a machine like Windows, Linux or Mac operating system and use it as an SMB or network drive. The next task is to restrict network access to a subnet. So let's go back to the storage account we created. So by default, storage accounts accept network connection from clients in any network, including the internet. 
So we need to deny network access from the internet and all other subnets in all virtual networks except for the private subnet in the core services VNet. So that is what we are going to do right now. So under security plus networking, so just scroll down and find security plus networking click on networking so please make sure that you are within your storage account itself so within this page instead of all network we are going to select selected network we don't have any virtual network association at the moment so click on add existing virtual network make sure you select the right subscription under virtual network select if you have multiple be please be careful so we only have one i'm going to select core services vnet and it will populate all the subnets available within that network so i'm going to select private and click on add we are not making any other changes uh, within this page so go on top of the window and click on save all right our settings has been saved all right so our next task is to create a virtual machine and test if the access is working or not so to do that i'm going to deploy a script which is going to deploy a virtual machine so fast so that we can continue with this exercise so creating a virtual machine is not that important for this lab so using the cloud shell i'm going to execute a script to create a virtual machine in our subnet so let's go back to the home page and go to virtual machines we don't have any at the moment but soon we will see a virtual machine created so we are actually creating two virtual machines one is one is to test the private endpoint another one is for the public access so let's do a quick refresh to see if anything is created yet so nothing yet at the moment all right so looks like our first vm is created so i'm going to minimize this window and click on refresh so one is running that means it is created and the second one is in the creating stage so these are the two virtual machines i talked about one is the private one another one is the public one all right, so both virtual machines are created and in running status. Now let's go and confirm the access to the storage account. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the private one. So click on the private virtual machine, which is, um, you can create any virtual machine, make sure you associate it to the private subnet and click on connect, click on RDP. I'm gonna download with the public IP address and download the RDP file to connect to this virtual machine. Click on connect, give the username for the server and the right password. Click OK, click on connect. All right, the VM is booted for the first time. So what we are going to do right now is we are going to go to the storage account and see if we can map the drive to this particular virtual machine. So we should be ideally be able to do that because we have already provided access to the storage account privately. So to do that, first let's go and find the script which is required for us to run this command. So I'm going to minimize it. So we have to go to the storage account to find the access key first. So on the left hand side for the storage account, scroll down. Under security and networking, click on access keys and click on show keys. So I'm going to copy one of the keys for this exercise. I'm going to copy this. Let's go back to the newly created virtual machine. I'm going to open a notepad and I'm going to save this key. And the next step is to go and find the storage account name. And we have to run a command on the local machine to make sure that we are able to access it. So I'm going to copy the storage account name. Keep it as a placeholder. So now we are going to replace these values in the script below. So I'm going to copy the access key. Copy the access key and replace the string here with the access key. Similarly, let's go and change the value of the storage account as well. Now that we have changed all the parameters which is required for us to change the access keys and the storage account, let's copy this and go to the virtual machine and open the PowerShell. And we are going to mount this storage account to this virtual machine. So we don't have any network drive at the moment. So if I click on this PC, you can see that there is only two drives. One is the C drive and another one is the temp drive. So what we are going to do right now is try to map this newly created marketing drive onto this virtual machine. All right, so we got a confirmation that 
we were able to map it so we didn't get any error so that means we have access to the storage account from this virtual machine which is placed in the private subnet so i'm going to quickly do a refresh for some reason it's still not showing as the map drive but the connection to this storage account is being successful so we know that that is working so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to run another command to ping internet access so ideally we should get no reply access because we have created a network security group and associated it to a private subnet which doesn't allow outbound access to the internet now let's log into another virtual machine this time go to the public virtual machine i'm going to go back to azure home page go to virtual machines and click on the public one and click on connect so i'm going to log into the public virtual machine provide the username and password to log into the virtual machine ideally in this public virtual machine we should not be able to mount the storage account we created so we should get a access denied error or if we don't have any access to this storage account and we should be able to ping outbound connection to the internet so let's go to the powershell again this time i'm going to copy the command which we wrote in the others virtual machine so let's open side by side and let's see if we can open it so rather than typing it one more time so i'm going to go to the public virtual machine and i'm going to execute this command here basically we should get an access denied error because we don't have yeah as you can see that we don't have access to access the storage account from a public virtual machine but now let's do internet testing so i'm going to ping google.com yes we have access to the internet so this was the test so you can create service endpoint to restrict access to any sort of resources which is azure sort of resources to make sure that you are allowing some sort of an access and some access is denied i hope the information provided in this lab is helpful i will see you on the next one until then take care